Thank you, Jeff. Although I'm not sure if I really am thanking you because this is going to be one of the hardest speaking tasks that ever been put to me. Um, yeah, the whole thing with the slides, they're just going to keep going and I'm going to keep talking. So, so, I cheated and did the thing of getting the actual definitions out because I needed a slide to get me kicked off. Um, I really didn't find that it was very helpful either, so I know exactly what you've been The thing that I want to pick up is um, the thing about imagination and creativity, and I really thought inspiration was a thing about the mind. Um, but what I found when I went looking um, and got stumped, just as everybody else I think really did, um, is inspiration really has to be something that touches your heart as well as, well as your head. Um, until the two things come together, it really doesn't make that connection that Leon um, with the back of um, talked about at the beginning. Um, so yeah, done a lot of public speaking, but I um, found it really, really difficult. So I wanted to go right back to the beginning. I know Jeff's really, really curious as to how Jurassic Park works in It's for two reasons. One is that Jurassic Park is the first movie I ever saw in a cinema, which says something about my age, and it also says something about the total lack of entertainment options in the hometown that I grew up in. It's probably why I'm in original development now. But there's also a wonderful line in Jurassic Park, and it's where um, Jeff Goldman, the leading lady whose name I forget, are sitting talking around these dinosaur eggs, which are all females. And she said, nah, it's all good. They're velociraptors, but they'll never breed because they're all females. And he just goes, life will find a way. And I remember that has got to be the thing that's got me into environmental science, which is where um, my, um, my undergraduate tertiary education went, and also my honours and my PhD. Um, and I know Leon um, said at the beginning that it doesn't have to be great powerful things that inspire, it can also be the great problems of the world as well. And that's probably something that speaks to me because um, certainly with my research stuff that I did after my, um, my undergraduate stuff was all about researching um, environmental problems. I think she doesn't come up really well, but the big mainstream one is, um, is a lake where I did my um, honours program, um, where it's, got, it's just completely wrecked by toxic blue green algae, so it's this, this disgusting sludge, and it's a lake in the middle of nowhere. Um, so it's really a shame that it's, it should be this pristine environment that isn't. And the little insect photo um, is not actually the one that's creating the mess at the top, but it's one that lives in our river here. Um, and it's got a horrible name, it's called Cylindrus Mopsis Rassibulsii, which is Polish. Um, but I can say that. <laughs> um, but, you know, it's, I, I was sort of inspired by this as I was studying, and I spent, believe it or not, three years of my life studying this thing. I don't know if that's inspiring or just plain stupidity. <laughs> Um, little plant in it creates this toxin and you, and you put a plant next to it, the plant will actually create more roots than it will um, leaves because it means that it can actually hide under the sediment so the toxin doesn't come up and, and start affecting it. I also looked at a little snail that actually um, breeds its young in the back of its head in its pouch and if you put a toxin next to it that creates in this little thing, it actually lets all its babies go. It, uh, it aborts them early so they can swim away and get away from the toxin. So as far as I'm concerned, that's life on your way. I put Mother Teresa in here, um, I know somebody else did as well. It's not because she's um, worked with the sitting poor, it's not because she's a Nobel Peace Prize winner, it's not because, certainly not because she's got a saint look, because I aspire perhaps to the first two, but certainly not to the third. Um, it's because um, she was very sick and towards the end of years of her life, probably the last 10 to 15 years, as most of you probably know, she's got um, quite a lot of health implications, like health complications, um, and kept on getting released back from hospital, and people would say, how, how is it that you get out of hospital every single time and manage to just keep going back and doing your work out in these terrible poor regions in here and where else she's working. Um, and she just kept saying, well, God doesn't think my work is finished here yet. And that was something that didn't speak to me personally until this thing came along. The um, little uh, shorty <laughs> creature was me. And I thought it was beautiful. I'm like, oh, She turned four in September. Um, and this photo is quite important to me because it's probably the only one I remember actually of her when she was very young and I was actually well. Um, about a week after that photo, I went back in hospital with um, what was appendicitis, but no one actually realised at the time. Um, and I actually was walking around with burst appendix for three months and had a whole lot of um, medical complications because of it. Um, so for the first 18 months of her life, I was not very well. I ended up having five surgeries, and the fifth one was to get rid of the scar tissue from the first four. Um, and it was a really hard time for me, and um, really difficult, of course, being a first-time mother as well. Um, but I guess. I guess the take home from that was that I am still here and, um, you know, perhaps there is work that I still have to do and maybe I should just get on with it and get some inspiration from that. Um, this is a bit of a bad take back of um, the work that I've been doing this year um, and I guess that's where my inspiration lies now. It's to do with innovation for regional areas um, and it really um, is important to me in finding ways that people can actually connect with each other and I think that's ways we can actually inspire each of each other um, because, um, as both of the earlier speakers have said, um, I think inspiration means different things to different people and you don't actually realise until you get out and start talking about it. Mm -hmm. So the last one I have is a bit of a cheat sheet for me, um, and it's where I'm going to start um, looking at my notes. Um, this is actually in the lake, the same lake that you saw in the first photo, um, but when it was um, not affected by the horrible blue and algae. Um, and of course it's a sunset photo. Um, and it's important to me because I have my favourite poem, and it's one stuck on my um, clipboard at home, or sorry, in the office. 
Um, and the homeschool day's end, um, it's always been inspirational to me because it talks about how we need to get the most out of each day and make sure that we earn another tomorrow. So I'd like to share it with you, um, just to finish up. So it's called day's end, and it says, is anyone happier that you passed this way? Does anyone remember if you spoke to them today? Did you spend love and joy until your own gifts were repaid, or were you just selfish when you rushed along your way? Your day is almost over and your task an hour through, but is anyone actually uttering a kindly word of you? Can you say tonight in passing, with your day it's slipping fast, that you helped a single other in the many that you passed? Did you waste this day and lose it? Was it well or sorely spent? Did you leave a trail of kindness or just a scar of discontent? Is a single heart rejoicing now for what you've said or did? Does one whose hopes were fading now with courage look ahead? As you close your eyes to slumber, can you think that one person might think of you and say that you've earned one more tomorrow with the work you did today?